Hi, my name is Jan Wilczek and I'm the founder of the Wolfstown blog and YouTube channel on audio programming. In the previous tutorial episode, we discussed how can we communicate from the C++ backend to the JavaScript frontend in our Juice WebView UIs. And this episode will look how we can communicate from the JavaScript frontend to the C++ backend. And there are essentially two methods you can use here. So first you can register a native function. So in the C++ backend, you say that this is a function that should be exposed to the JavaScript code to call it. And then the JavaScript frontend can call this function. And there's another mechanism that in C++, you can listen for JavaScript emitted events and then handle those events. So we'll look at these two methods following our tutorial project. To show you how calling native function looks, we'll have a label in the C++ frontend that will be updated when we click a button in our WebView UI. So for this, I want to create a label in our plugin editor. This will be here. Choose label and I'll call this label updated from JavaScript. It's a name called label. And the first text appearing there is going to be to be updated from JavaScript. And then, of course, in our, the constructor of our plugin editor, we need to call add and make visible. And here we're going to have label updated from JavaScript. And of course, we uh, need to also resize it. So as before, we use the same uh, code. So we will have here label updated from JavaScript exactly. And uh, how we're going to proceed with this here. And again, in web browser component options, we're going to register the native function that we want our uh, front end to call. So we'll go with native function. And here we need to pass in juice identifier. And we'll call it native function. And the next argument is exactly the callback to be executed. So it's going, what we uh, receive in this callback is an array of the var elements. So the front end can pass any JavaScript objects and this will be converted to juice variant uh, type. And then the, the other parameter is also very important. And this is juice web browser component native function completion. So once the native function gets called, C++ code can call the completion object so that the JavaScript code can perform some action after the nat native function got completed. And here, uh, I, since I don't want to specify everything, you know, here in this, in this Lambda callback, I'll just create a separate function in plugin editor uh, that will be called. So I'll call native function, I'll pass in args and I move the completion object. Okay, and obviously this uh, now is an error because we don't have native function defined here, but we'll define it here. So these are the, the arguments of this method. And this will return nothing. So it's going to be void native function and uh, it's going to say exactly the same arguments as, uh, as the with native function requires us to pass in this callback. So now let, let's copy this signature and at the bottom of the plugin editor, we can define it. We need to specify here uh, the class that it comes from. Okay. Perfect. And, you know, since in the arguments, we can get uh, any number of, of arguments and number of JavaScript objects. We need to keep our code dynamic. 
But uh, since this native function will be executed in the context of, uh, of our GUI, uh, then we can uh, update the labels safely, right? Because the choose components can only be updated from the GUI thread. And this is exactly what we can do in a native function comeback. So we'll create an empty string and we'll call it concatenated arcs. Okay, and in a for loop, uh, we'll simply append to this concatenated argument. So we'll have for cons auto argument from arcs. We have concatenated arcs assign plus equal arc to string. Okay, and now we have all our arguments as string. And then we have label updated from JavaScript. And we'll go set text. And we'll pass here native function called with arcs. And we'll pass here the concatenated arcs. And we specify that we don't want to send any notification. Okay. And the last bit is that we can call the completion to say, okay, this callback executed. And uh, if we look here, we can again pass here a variant object. We can pass here whatever we want, right, to the completion. But we'll just pass in a string calling native function callback all okay. Okay, so once again, uh, in the constructor of our web view, we call with native function. We pass here the native function that we want to execute uh, under this native function name. And once this is executed, our label will be updated with this text, which contains all the arguments passed to the native function. And then we'll call the completion object with a uh, variant type. So with a, basically a JavaScript object, and this completion will be then executed in uh, JavaScript. So this is actually all that we need to do on the C++ side. So we can actually build it and let's run this. Okay, as you can see, we got our label here and this uh, here and this label waits to be updated from JavaScript. But we have not written yet any JavaScript code to intercept this. So that's something that we'll do now. In our HTML, we're going to add a button. And this button will exactly call this native function. So we'll call this native function button. And the text inside should be call a C++ function. And in our index.js, once the website is, is loaded, our UI is loaded, uh, we go document, add event listener. And well, the whole web page is loaded. Then we add this callback. So we get our button, document get element by id because we know it's it's it should be there and then call native function button and we call button at event listener and go click so on click will uh execute the native function, but the native function is already available during initialization, so we can retrieve it here. const native function, and we'll do retrieve the uh, handler to the native function we need to call juice, and then uh, get native function, and we need to pass here the name under which it was registered. So again, we called it native function. So this title corresponds to this title, okay, we have it here. Okay, and once uh, the button is click, clicked, then we call it native function, and we can pass in whatever arguments we want. So we get one, two, and null. And we can specify a continuation because we, we got this completion, right? So now we can handle the continuation that was handed to us uh, from C++. And again, we'll simply, you know, log the result. Okay, 
So this is a semicolon here, this is a semicolon here, and this is a semicolon here. And again, what's nice about it, uh, we changed our HTML, we changed our JavaScript, but we have not uh, changed our C++, so we can simply run this plugin and, and see the result. Okay, we got our, our button, and uh, maybe let me open the console here. And console, okay. And here's our label. So when I click this button, this label should be updated. And I should get a response from C++ logged here. So I click this button. This uh, label gets updated. It says native function called with Rx1, 2. So now it got not printed. It has no string representation, right? And then uh, the callback, so the completion got called with this argument, native function callback, all okay. And this got printed to the console. Okay, so this was the first uh, very easy, very nice mechanism to communicate uh, from JavaScript to C++, we can register a native function in C++, and we can call it from JavaScript, and then we can handle uh, the continuation of this uh, of this function. But now let's move on to the next method of communicating from JavaScript uh, front end to the C++ backend. So we can have a, an event uh, listener. So we can emit JavaScript events that we can listen to in C++. Okay, and now. We'll uh, start from the front end side, so we'll create another button and we'll call this emit event button and call this emit a front end event and then in uh, on JavaScript we can uh, retrieve this button const emit event button document get element by id emit event button and uh, we go emit event button add event listener and again on click we're going to uh, emit an event so what we need for this window choose backend emit event and we'll call this example javascript event and here's the object that we want to pass in and uh, what we can do here nicely is that we can specify okay emitted count to zero and then once this is clicked we'll simply increment this and then uh, we can pass it as a, as a JavaScript object to our C++ backend. Emitted count. Okay. And here's a semicolon. Okay, and this is actually all we need to do on the front-end side. So let's see how it looks. Okay, we have... Uh, this button so when I, but when I click emit a front-end event nothing happens right because we have not written C++ code that listens for this event so for this we need to go here and we need to pass yet another option to web browser component options and it's this is called with event listener and here the first argument is uh, the ID of this event so I'll call it example JavaScript event, as we call this in the front end. And then uh, we'll also update the label, but this one is easier, so we'll do it here. So we get the var object from the front end. This is not an array, this is a single object. And as you can see, we have no continuation here. So we'll have just label updated from JavaScript. And uh, we'll call set text, and we'll call it example JavaScript event occurred with value. And here we'll retrieve uh, object from front end, get property, and we'll write emitted count because that's the property that you want to get. 
and then the value, the default value will be zero if this property is not uh, available. And uh, of course we need to convert it to string. And we don't want to send any notification. Okay. So once again, we register an option with event listener that will listen for this event, example, JavaScript event. And then once uh, this event occurs, our C++ backend is called. So this callback is called and uh, we update the label in our uh, C++ frontend. So of course I need to build this again because I changed the C++ side. And uh, once this is done, we can test emitting events on the JavaScript and retrieving them in C++. Okay, this is done. Let's run this plugin. Okay, uh, as you can see, when you click emit a front-end event, this label gets updated. Example, JavaScript event occurred with value one. Now, if I click it more times, this value increases as we expected. If we call the first button again, the one that called native function, this label changes again and I can call this one again, and so on and so forth. So these were two ways you can interact from JavaScript frontend with the C++ backend. You can either register a native function in the C++ backend that the JavaScript frontend can call, or you can emit JavaScript events on the frontend and the C++ backend can register a handler that will be called once this JavaScript event occurs. And I highly encourage you to debug these calls on your own and see what happens. The nice thing about them is that they all happen in the context of the GUI thread, so we can safely update GUI components there. This was all for this episode. And in the uh, next tutorial episode, we'll look into how we can uh, develop our plugin using a live development server. So I highly encourage you to stay tuned for this. Thank you for watching and take care.